This is Craig with Karshalton Advisory. In this video, we're going to go through Chapter 6, the introduction to DAX measures in Kali and Singh's Power Pivot and Power BI, the Excel User's Guide to the Data Revolution. Let's get started. So as in our other videos, my first recommendation is to start with either the Chapter 5 sample file that was included in the author's download package or you can continue using the, the workbook, the custom workbook that we worked through chapters four and five with. Either way, the challenge is if you start with the chapter six, um, all the work's already done and uh, you, you won't get the same experience in trying to build things uh, when all the work's already been done for you. So let's get cracking. What we're gonna do in this chapter is understanding DAX measures and how to add them. So let's start by adding some measures. And there's, there's two ways that you can go about this process. Um, you can either create a measure within Excel through a power pivot table. Uh, the second way you can do it is within power pivot itself. And you, there, in the bottom of the tables, there is a like a measure uh, grid where you can add these in. But we're gonna go through the first, first method, doing it via Excel first. And later in the review, we'll go through that second method. So there's two ways to get to a pivot table. Uh, first off is you can do it through Power Pivot by highlighting the, or by selecting the tab, opening up your data model, and from within the Power Pivot window, all you need to do is select a pivot table here. And when you do that, it's going to ask you if you want one in a new worksheet or an existing worksheet. So we're going to click New, and that will create our new pivot table window here. The second method, I'm going to delete this. Um, the second way we can do it is actually from Excel itself. Um, what we're going to do is go into the Insert tab. And from the Insert tab, we select Pivot Table, just like you might have done before uh, without using Power Pivot. Uh, the difference is rather than selecting a table that's already existent within the Excel workbook, what we're going to select is to use the workbook's data model. And so then it's going to reach back into the Power Pivot and Power Query in order to grab, grab the data. And we'll select a new worksheet as well. So we end up kind of the same place. You could do it either way, whichever uh, method is more convenient for you with the way that you're working. Um, let's just move this so I'm out of the way for you. And uh, so let's uh, focus on the sales table here. Um, so over here, we can see rather than just being keyed to one table like normally in Excel, you'd been limited to, um, we can see all of our tables that are in our workbooks data model. So we're just going to start working on the sales model to begin with. So let's create our first measure. There are two ways that we can create a measure within Excel. Uh, first off is through the Power Pivot tab. When we highlight the Power Pivot tab in the ribbon, we go into Measures, select New Measure. The second method we can use is over here in the Pivot Table section. We can right-click on our table name, which in this case the Sales one. We'll select Add Measure, and we come up with the same Measure Creation dialog box. So with this, we can leave Table Name as Sales. We're going to use the measure name of total sales. And let's create our formula. So in most cases, the DAX formulas behave the same as Excel. Uh, so if a sum formula in DAX is going to behave the same way as sum does in Excel. However, there are lots of new capabilities that we'll get to later in the book. So we'll start with a sum formula. We need to create this on our sales table. And then with the square bracket, we can bring in sales amount, which is the value that we want to have summarized. Now, notice that we can actually select the category here, and that'll format our, our numbers the way that we want them, whether it's a uh, date, currency, a number. Uh, so I'm just going to select a number here without any decimal places. Uh, and I like having a separator. We'll click OK. And so there's nothing different here in the pivot table itself, but when we look over here in the field list, down at the bottom we see total sales, 
The fact that it's a measure is highlighted by the fact that it has the formula sign uh, preceding it. So let's uh, create our table here. We're going to drag this down to the values. So now you can see total sales on that table are over, what's that, $29 million. Uh, and that now let's make it look more like a typical table. We're going to take the month field, add it to our rows. Now we can see month by month how many sales are recorded in this table. And then we can take year into columns. And so now we have a more traditional uh, pivot table look where we have our years across the top, month by month along the left, and each, each cell represents the amount of sales in that month of that given year. Uh, you notice because we selected the, the, the number type that all of these are now are formatted as uh, in, in the format that we preferred. Now, some of you might have noticed as we go through this process that, you know what, I, I could have created this already in a pivot table. And, and to be quite frank, uh, you're right. Um, there, there, are, there is another method of getting that same amount. So for example, we can unclick our total sales, the measure that we created. And instead, we can click the sales amount box here. And you'll notice that while the formatting is slightly different, the values are identical to what we created through our measure. And, and this is a demonstration that there are two ways of uh, creating a calculation or a measure within Excel, within Power Pivot. The first is what they call an implicit measure. And so an implicit measure is the measure that we get just by clicking in the box here. So this is implicitly created in Excel. The user doesn't have to do any programming. The second method is by going into the measure editor and creating a measure uh, by using the DAX language within the measure dialog box. So the authors in the book stress that from now on, using explicit measures, that is the measures that we create ourselves, are a far more powerful tool. And while it may not be visible right at this point, as we work through the rest of the textbook, that creating explicit measures are going to give us many benefits that will be laid out before our eyes. So from now on, we're no longer just going to be clicking in order to get a total or a measure in our pivot tables. Instead, we will be writing out our DAX formulas to get explicit measures. Thanks for watching this episode. Make sure you've subscribed so you'll know when the next segment of this chapter Chapter 6 is fairly lengthy, so it'll probably be a three-part uh, series to get through this particular chapter, maybe even four, depending on how things go. Well, I'll look forward to speaking with you then. This is Craig with Karshalton Advisory. Thanks for watching.